Hey what's going on folks, my name is Grey, this is Video Holocaust, the best channel on YouTube for action movies and cult cinema reviews. And today's video is actually on a topical subject, as Hollywood once again frets and fusses while trying to cast females in leading roles in action movies, but keep bollocksing it up, and just can't seem to figure out why. Like a man with no legs, they're stumped. But as usual, they're not the trailblazers that they like to think they are, as Hong Kong would, for a time, be the place to be for any young starlet looking to kick ass on screen. Thanks largely to the success of today's review. Angels. A movie that despite its low budget and lack of bankable stars would prove to be a big hit with local audiences and with the growing worldwide market. But how does it fare in the gender wars of the 2020s? Let's find out. The 1970s and the start of the worldwide kung fu boom ushered in by the fists of fury of Bruce Lee may be what most people envision when thinking of the golden age of martial arts action cinema from Hong Kong. But for me, the 1980s is when it crystallised into its ultimate incarnation, where the settings and scenarios were less about tradition and history and focused more on urban and up-to-date characters and events. But like everything else in the fickle and fast-moving world of Hong Kong, it wasn't long before every conceivable novelty was tried in order to entice moviegoers. One of these was what would come to be known as the girls with guns genre. Starting with the Sammo Hung produced Police Assassins in 1985, which starred then unknown Cynthia Rothrock and Michelle Kahn, later Michelle Yeoh, Sammo was looking to update the once popular female-led action vehicles of the 70s, which made stars of actresses such as Cheng Pei Pei, Kara Wai and Li Qing. And its success meant a slew of cheaply shot knockoffs quickly followed. But 1987's Angels would break out of the pack and become ground zero for a short lived but highly influential genre. A genre that over the next few years would come to be spearheaded by Angel's young star Moon Lee, who at 22 not only would turn in a fine performance, but would also endear herself into the hearts of a generation of martial arts movie aficionados all over the world, of which I count myself, as we got to see for the first time on screen her kung fu abilities, which came as a bit of a shock to those who only knew her from the girlfriend slash little sister roles in movies like Mr Vampire and Winners and Sinners. Now Hong Kong action movies from this time period can be judged by many standards, but the yardstick I like to use is... What's the villain like? Demented, even by Hong Kong film standards, which were usually written on the back of a fag packet prior to shooting. Our main villain is an over-the-top oddball of cartoony proportions, played with a let-off-the-leash performance from another bit player given their chance to strut their stuff on screen, Yukari Oshima, who interestingly, despite being half Chinese and fluent in Mandarin, couldn't speak a word of Cantonese, so on screen she's speaking Japanese and being dubbed into Cantonese. But this wasn't as unusual or potentially problematic as it sounds, as nearly all Hong Kong movies at this time were shot in silence with everyone providing the voices in post. Hong Kong was notorious at this time for being the only country whose films were dubbed poorly in their own language. Now besides the cast of kung fu fighting fillies on display, there's another young lady involved worth a mention, and that's Teresa Wu, who both wrote and directed this film and it's quickly put into production sequel. But for a very long time, I always thought that Teresa Wu was a pseudonym, as I could never find any other films bearing her name. But I can confirm she is indeed real, as in the token research I did for this video, I discovered she wrote the god-awful B-movie College Kickboxer, a movie that to my knowledge has never been re-released on DVD and is among the more obscure to find these days. But as someone who's seen it, I can honestly say with hand on heart, 
that may not be a bad thing. The story centres around the Hong Kong police's continued war on drugs, where in the movie's opening they instigate a raid on a poppy field in Thailand and burn the crops. Slightly miffed at such a massive hit on profits, the villains plan their next step, but Yukari Oshima, in full-on scenery-chewing mode, vows vengeance, assassinating all of those involved one by one. With the Hong Kong police reeling, they're approached by a DEA agent with authority from Uncle Sam to finance a secret crime-fighting group known as the Angels or as they're known in this UK dub as the Iron Angels, which was just one of the staggering amount of alternate names that this film goes by in different territories. Some of the others include, but are not limited to, uh, Fighting Madam, Midnight Angels, and I've even seen it called Ultra Force. But let me know in the comments section what you guys knew it as, because I think this film had more titles than Floyd Mayweather. Despite the name of the group being Angels, Angel number one is a bloke. But fuck him, we're here for the gun-toting totty. Because besides Angel number two, Moon Lee, the third member is Elaine, played by cutie Elaine Liu, for who this movie seems to be the peak of her accomplishments if her IMDb page is anything to go by. But after taking the fight to the evil organisation, now run by Oshima after her murder of the previous triad boss, the stage is set for the selling point of any great martial arts flick, the end fight scene which is a real highlight it has to be said, even if there is a significant chunk involving a plank of wood with nails in it cut from the UK dub. In fact, there's a few scenes that have been snipped in the UK release, but as this is one of the few Hong Kong movies I've never gotten around to watching in its original Cantonese, I can't comment if it includes any additionally shot scenes of the Western market. But whatever version you have access to, this is definitely one to watch. It's very much both of its time and an example of the best and worst Hong Kong movies have to offer, as it's one action set piece after another with some token plot sprinkled hither and thither. But if it's action that concerns you, you'll be well catered for with this classic piece of Hong Kong's once proud filmmaking past. The movie even ends with someone slipping on a banana peel for fuck's sake. So my name's Grey, this has been my review of... Angels, a cheeky little number that's well worth a watch. So, more videos coming your way very soon, so be sure to stay tuned for them, and thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.